Chapter 2, Part 2, Whales and Reptoids, Friends, or Foes? By Seth Lyon 100 million years ago, the group of Ascended Masters, also known as the Patal, the Founders, the Builder Race, and by this point many other names, who, had set up a base in the area we now call Antarctica, were monitoring the Draco farming, and breeding programs that were currently underway. Eventually, these Ascended Masters decided that having Earth controlled, and inhabited almost exclusively by reptiles wasn't in alignment with the overall unfolding of destiny that needed to occur in our little corner of the multiverse, which led to 65 million years ago, the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, using gravitic technology, they essentially lassoed an oxygen-rich comet that was passing by at the time, and crashed it into the Earth. The devastation of this impact led to the extinction of the dinosaurs, and put an end to the use of our Earth as a livestock farm by the Draco, although they are still around today, and the Earth is now a very different kind of farm, but we'll get to that later. The Draco presence was withdrawn from the planet, with the exception of a small group of negative Chakar royalty whom descended underground. The Chakar command also set up domed cities on Venus in order to, have another base in the area, and of course they still had their cities on, and in, the moon. On Earth, once the dust had settled, the atmosphere was more oxygen-rich, and more suitable for the coevolution of both mammals, and reptiles, which was more in line with what the Ascended Masters saw as this planet's destiny. They reseeded the Earth with the genetic material of the many life forms, gathered from different planets in our galaxy, and then most of them took off to other areas of the multiverse. One major branch would settle in the area of Arcturus, and become those we know as the Arcturians. One group stayed behind though. They set up a fifth density civilization on Venus, to oversee the development of life on Earth, and to keep an eye on the Draco. This group was led by Lord Sanat Kumara, and they would eventually become known as the Nakals. They have played a major role in our history ever, since that time. Fifty million years ago, life was developing nicely on Earth when a group of relatively civilized non-aggressive reptilian hybrids, meaning not exclusively reptilian as they also had some human DNA, in the mix, from Orion, and Sagittarius arrived and petitioned the Nakals for permission to establish a fifth density civilization on the Earth. The Nakals granted their request with one condition, that they not interfere with an intelligent civilization of mammals that was currently flourishing here, the pre-cetaceans. Go look at the skeleton of a whale, or dolphin, you will see that there is still a tiny residual hip bone from when they were land creatures. It's known by modern scientists that whales, and dolphins are intelligent, and that their ancestors walked on land, but, it is not known that those ancestors were actually the first intelligent mammalian civilization on Earth. That race, the pre-cetaceans would have a long peaceful coevolution, and then struggle, and then eventually war, with this new group of settlers. 42 million years ago. For 8 million years these two races have evolved, and flourished side by side, developing to the point that there was a high level of technology, and spiritual enlightenment on Earth. The pre-cetaceans lived close to the Earth, focusing on an agricultural lifestyle, and working on evolving their spiritual, and psychic abilities. The reptoids were more interested in technology, and the two cultures traded to mutual advantage. The technological advancements of the reptoids made for increased efficiency in the pre-cetaceans farming practices, and the reptoids received food, and also lessons in spiritual development for those few of that race that were so inclined. All was going along quite well for a long, long time, but eventually that old enemy of the mammalian form, the race of pure-blooded negative Chakar, who, had gone into a long hibernation, underground woke up, and they didn't like what they saw happening on the world above. 
they began to make contact with their reptoid cousins on the surface, and did their best to sow seeds of resentment towards the precetaceans, resentment that the reptoids were predisposed towards anyway, due to their genetic heritage. The reptoids had always been subconsciously envious of, and sometimes outwardly hostile towards the precetaceans' proficiency with psychic abilities, a proficiency that some of the reptoids did manage to develop, but only a very few. It took a long time, but eventually the Chakar poisoned the culture of the reptoid civilization to the point that they began to mistrust, and then turn on the precetaceans. Eventually this friction led to war between the two groups, or rather, it would have led to war, if the pre-cetaceans had not preempted it. The more advanced beings among that race, the leaders who, had developed the ability to step outside of the stream of time, and see the past, and probable future, saw this coming long before it actually happened, and they had set their course in motion thousands of years before the war actually began. They selected a portion of their race to begin undergoing gene mutation, evolving rapidly into a species that could live in the oceans of the Earth, so that their presence on the planet could be maintained after the inevitable conflict which they foresaw. When the reptoids launched their attack, even though they were a much more aggressive, and technologically advanced race, they really didn't stand a chance. Even nuclear, and scalar weapons, both of which the reptoids possessed, were no match for the power of the pre-cetacean consciousness, a group mind that could manipulate matter itself. The ocean-dwelling pre-cetaceans were well established at this point, so when the reptoids attacked, the land-dwelling pre-cetaceans took to their interstellar ships, the technology for which had been, ironically, developed alongside with the reptoids in more peaceful times. Once the pre-cetacean race was off-planet with their cousins safely underwater, they used their group mind to penetrate the reptoids' incredibly powerful fusion reactors. A little mental nudge is all that was required to implode the reactors, resulting in nuclear explosions that decimated 98% of the reptoid population. The 2% who survived fled to Mall Deck, also called Diamat, a planet that used to be part of our solar system but which now is our asteroid belt. Not a very spiritually advanced choice on the part of the supposedly evolved pre-cetaceans you might say. But here is a hard truth. Even those who have progressed to advanced states of consciousness, when confronted with either the destruction of their race, or another, will often choose self-preservation. Besides, there was more at stake than their own survival there was the Earth herself to think about. The pre-cetaceans might still have chosen simply to flee, many were in favor of that, but, if they had fled they would have left the planet in the claws of the increasingly aggressive reptoids, who might very well have recommenced terraforming operations, working to once again make the atmosphere suitable only to the flourishing of reptiles, which was not in alignment with the destiny of Earth. The wise ones of the pre-cetaceans looked down many, many time streams, and consulted with Lord Sanat Kamara, and the Nakals on Venus, and in the end all were in agreement that this path was the one that would lead to the best possible outcome for the most beings. When you have only hard choices, you have to sometimes choose the best hard choice. Now that they had rid the Earth of the aggressive, war-minded reptilians, mostly that, is, the ones underground were still alive, and kicking, the pre-cetaceans, now the, cetaceans, could establish a safe haven for the flourishing of their offspring, who would become our present day whales, and dolphins, who still perform a very important service for our planet. Their group consciousness has held the memory of our Earth, since that time and they have preserved that genetic memory through times when our planet's consciousness field has collapsed, resulting in a total wiping out of the planet's Akashic memory banks, the information of all lives ever lived on a particular planet, stored in that planet's electromagnetic gravitic field. Whales, and dolphins act as an external hard drive, from time to time when our Earth's memory banks have been corrupted, or wiped out, 
the cetaceans have been there to upload the backup.